progress. A true entrepreneur is a doer, not a dreamer. Entrepreneur and entrepreneurship, these are the words that we can hear frequently in today's society. Actually, what is entrepreneurship? How can we build this entrepreneurial mindset? And another interesting thing is, what are the ingredients for a recipe of success? Let us delve deeper into these topics. A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the third session of Info Studio, organized by the Industrial Management Science Student Association of the Department of Industrial Management. Today's session is streamed live on official Facebook page of Info Studio, as well as on the IMSA UOK YouTube channel. Okay, move on to the today's session. The topic of the day is online entrepreneurship and recipe of success. So without further ado, let me introduce our guest speaker to you. So I warmly welcome Mr. Malinda Alhakon for our session. Mr. Malinda Alhakon is a distinguished social media influencer and a popular YouTube personality who hosts the Tech Track show on Tech Track YouTube channel. He launched his YouTube channel in 2014 and has since continued to impart valuable knowledge to technology enthusiasts. Therefore, we believe he is the ideal person to provide us with the professional insights onto the today's session. So, good. Good evening, sir. On behalf of Department of Industrial Management, I would like to welcome you, sir, to this session. Now, I would like to hand over this session to you. Thank you, Sandeshi. Uh, thank you, everyone, for inviting me for this session. Uh, so in this session, people, uh, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to straight uh, walk into the subject. Uh, I'm going to talk about how to make money online uh, by providing service to the global market. So. Uh, let me uh, go into my slide straight away and here we go so uh, the first thing the first thing that we have to understand is the global market so in sri lanka we are so stuck in this country we are so stuck in this tiny island so that's the biggest problem we are facing we are thinking in the context of sri lanka but people uh, let me remind you that we are living in planet earth not in sri lanka sri lanka is in planet earth so we have to think in the context of the entire planet, then we can open up a lot more markets. And so just take a look at all the uh, uh, price increases in goods. So some times ago, uh, we had something for 100 bucks. Now it 150 bucks, maybe 200 bucks. But if you convert most of those things into the global reserve currency, dollars, those prices actually have decreased. If you take a look at those, if you do little calculation, you will figure out that some of the prices are actually decreased. So 
the biggest problem is like we are so stuck in this country we are not connected to the global economy so that's why we are facing all these problems like in at this moment sri lanka is in a triple deficit we have a primary deficit we have a trade deficit and we have a balance of payment problem as well so that's why we are in this kind of difficult situation so the only way out of this problem is to make money and connect with the global market and make so much money so sri lankan economy last time i checked pre crisis it was 86 billion dollars so in the next 5 to 10 years we should have this big target to double it at least like hit 150 billion dollars then we can take a breather so last time i check again pre crisis uh, our gdp per capita was 4000 dollars so we have to make it like 8000 dollars but to be like super comfortable we have to make it like 12000 dollars at least so we have to create wealth we have to make money so to make money we have to go, go into global market before we go, go into global, global market we have to understand what kind of landscape we are living in so if you take a look at this picture you can see the biggest pro, uh, biggest portion of global market is captured by united states and then we have china and uh, if you take a look at the uh, continents so the north america is capturing some part of this a huge part but asia is capturing the largest part of the uh, global economy how about that so asia is the giant in this world currently and we are in the center of asia so and take a look at the europe in europe you can see there are lots of countries capturing huge markets like germany spain italy uk and france and russia too the russia is uh, next to that so russia too and uh, you know like russia is making a huge impact to the world by dominating countries and messing up with markets but look at their economy it's not that big by the way and india look at india they have 3.3 trillion dollar market date but if you travel back like to by 20 maybe 30 years they are like next to invisible in this uh, landscape so china is also the same so they're capturing so much money and they're capturing huge proportions huge huge portions of global market and they're making huge impact so well uh, the biggest question people where is sri lanka so can you see sri lanka in this image like if you take a close look if you take a super close look you'll be able to see sri lanka next to india and in between singapore it's so tiny and uh, now that it's even tinier so that's the problem we are facing people we are not capturing the global market just imagine by tomorrow morning sri lanka is deleted from planet earth how many countries would notice you think sri lanka is deleted from the planet it's no more how many people would notice would india notice would usa notice i don't really think so they came to know that okay there was a country called sri lanka right there somewhere there in the indian ocean but it's not there anymore they might notice after some time but i don't really think it'll impact them much but if we delete india then we have a big problem lots of products we are getting from india lots of products lots of countries are getting from india what if we delete china again huge problem like we wouldn't have anything we have we are enjoying today my camera wouldn't be here my mic wouldn't be here my laptop phone anything wouldn't be here if china is deleted usa so they're contributing huge proportions like huge amount of goods and services to the global market but we are not that is the point like that is the underlying problem we are trying to solve so to do this as a country we have to do some stuff as individual we can contribute too as individual you can create wealth and make your lives better then the entire country is uh, built with 22 million individuals right so if you are making your individual economy better the country's economy will be automatically better then at a certain point we can take policy decisions to push the country into the right direction but at the moment we cannot really see that kind of step so you can take individual steps so you can stand out as individuals and look at your personal economy and grow it so to grow it you have to join the global market as an individual so currently the sri lanka is not joining the global market as a country in a significant scale so yes we are joining a global market by providing housemaids that said then uh, we are providing uh, labor for the uh, 
manufacturing industry, it's pretty good actually. Then we are providing some IT services, it's like a little more than a billion dollars per year, I guess. Maybe not, like around billion dollar, uh, I guess. So we have to make uh, more billion dollar industries. So that should be the long term plan. But currently, we don't really have that kind of national political focus towards this. But uh, there's no point of complaining. So let's take a look at our individual economies, like our personal economies, and we'll try to double it in the next six months, maybe in one year. I think it should be possible if you take a closer look into the global market and try to capture something. So in next few years, uh, the global market supposed to exceed 100 trillion. So that means like new trillion dollars will be added to the global market. So trillion dollars means uh, uh, 10 trillion means uh, 10,000 billions, That's a huge amount of money. So all you have to do is like capture a few billions out of it as a, as a country. So that has to be the plan. So uh, then we have to take a look. Then we have to understand where are the economies expanding to, like how the economy is expanding to. I'll go back to my previous slide. Remember this word up, go back to my previous slide. How United States captured 25.3 trillion economy. They did that through science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, right? So then how China did it? Again, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Japan, India, Germany, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So France, Italy, UK, also the same. So the global economy is expanding into science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And if you go to Anuradhapura or maybe Polo Naro and look at all the uh, uh, ancient ruins of a great civilization once was there, in those area. So what did they do in Anuradhapura or Polo Narua? What did they do? They used science, technology, engineering, and mathematics to build a great civilization and create wealth, right? So we have done it in the history. Now that we are not doing it, so we had to restart that process. So it's in our genes. So we can do it and we should do it. To do that, we have to understand that the global economy is expanding into science technology, engineering, and mathematics, and we call these STEM subjects. But now this uh, scope is a little expanded to STEAM. That means like we are calling it science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. But we have to understand this art in a very subtle way. So this art means commercial arts. So when you go to any place, you go to a shopping mall, a supermarket, you look around, you can see lots of posters, banners, labels, lots of things. All of those things are designed by a graphic designer. So it's a huge global market. When you are watching YouTube, when you are watching television, so all of those videos, VFX, animation, and 3D modeling and animation, all of those things are done by video producers, 3D animators, 3D modeling artists. So it's a huge global market. So this art means that, commercial art. So we need that in mix with science, technology, engineering, and mathematics to build a great economy, a huge economy. So these are the subjects that you, that you should focus on. And currently you guys are in, uh, you guys are undergraduate students. I'm pretty sure that all of you guys are doing science, technology, engineering, or mathematics, aren't you? You guys are doing those things already. So uh, you are in the right place already. So now that you had to do is, you have some knowledge already. You may have some knowledge already now that you have to connect with the global economy. So when you're connecting with the global economy, uh, you have to sort out few things. You have to sort out few things because connecting with the global economy is uh, unheard of in Sri Lanka because it's not so common in Sri Lanka. If you go to China, all the people are talking about like how to build something and how to come up with some service and sell it to the global market. If you go to Japan, it's a very common thing. In Sri Lanka, it's not a very common thing. But if you're building something, if you're manufacturing something, you're creating a service for the local market, it's a common thing in Sri Lanka. But if you're designing a product or service for the global market, it's very unusual. Most of the people wouldn't understand you. So we had to like pass through a few barriers. So I think the first barrier that we had to pass through is uh, uh, English. 
So uh, I'll talk about that. So uh, let's say uh, I told you before. So uh, it's really nice if we can do this as a country, if we have a national political focus to open up all the barriers we have in Sri Lanka and open the Sri Lanka for the global market, then we are trying to capture a huge portion of global market, maybe few other billions, maybe like we are targeting like 150 billion economy in the next five or maybe 10 years, that would be awesome. But at the, at the moment, we don't really have that kind of national focus. But uh, I told you before, like, let's, yes, we understand that there's no such a national focus, it's okay, but I have a personal focus that you can have, right? That you have full control of. So you can go to the global market as a freelancer. So if you're going to a global market as a freelancer, this is the checklist. So your English should be good. I'm not saying that like you should be so good in English, but you should have some understanding of English in writing, listening, speaking, and all of those uh, four components, reading, writing, listening, and speaking. Then you should have a skill. So this skill should be a commercial skill. So there should be a demand for it. Then you should be really good at it. And you should have some experience in that skill. This experience means like when we talk about experience, you always think that like you should go to office and sit on a desk and practice something. It's not the case. Like you can gain practice in many other different ways. Then you should have a portfolio. Portfolio means, okay, let's say you are a graphic designer. You are a software engineer. Uh, most of you guys are from IT backgrounds, I guess. Let's say you are a software engineer. So you are saying that you are a software engineer. Let's say you pass out from a, a University of Kalania and uh, you have a certificate and you are saying that you are a software engineer, but uh, like, let's say I'm hiring you, I'm asking you a different question. Okay, uh, University of Kalani, prestigious university in Sri Lanka, cool, you have a certificate, cool. And you are saying that you are a software engineer, nice. Prove me, prove me the fact that you are a software engineer. Now, what would you do? What would you do? Think about it. You might have faced this question uh, after a couple of years after you graduate. So you are from University of Kalania, prestigious university in Sri Lanka. You have a valid certificate. And it says you are a software engineer, but now that I'm asking you to prove the fact that you are a software engineer. I'm not really sure the chat section is open. If the chat is open for everyone, uh, you can talk to me. Is it like uh, someone from the organizing committee? Could you please confirm me whether the chat is open for everyone? Is it or not? Uh, if the chat is open for the participant, please. Uh, Talk to me. I'd like to listen to your feedback as well. I open the chat in my left hand side so I can see if you guys are chatting to me. Right. So what would you do? Like if you have a mobile app, so in the interview process, maybe after a couple of years after you graduate, uh, you are telling people that, uh, like you are telling that I'm from University of Kalania and I have a software engineering or IT degree and I have done these, these stuff and I'm asking, okay, prove it then you should have something to show for. You are saying that, okay, look at this mobile application. I built it. I designed it and I built it. Look at this website. I developed it and I designed it. So then you have proof. That's why we need a portfolio. So portfolio is also important. Then with all of those things, like I'm not really saying that like we have sold out all of those things to go to, go to global market, but it's really nice. Like if you're working on those things to go to global market, then uh, how to develop English? Uh, the developing English are, uh, oh, oh, hey, I'm getting a comment. Like that means the comment section is open. That's actually a really good suggestion. I'm saying uh, like, uh, I'm not really sure who's talking to me. This is, uh, okay, this is Pasindu. Pasindu is saying that you can uh, maintain a GitHub account. Really nice idea. So if you are a software engineer, if you are a developer coder, if you have a GitHub account, really nice like that means like proof that you are a software engineer and you're actually in it do it nice idea hats off for that person though so uh, then you need english to communicate with the global community because uh okay you know english is a global language but sometimes you need other languages too but we'll try to sort out english first sometimes you have to sort out other languages like french german and spaniel spanish or maybe Mandarin, Chinese, that kind of stuff. But we'll focus on English first because if you can handle English, then you can talk to lots of people on this planet. So how to learn English? So the process that you should follow is like you have to understand like what kind of English language 
proficiency is expected by different countries. So like if you have to prove the fact that you know English, what would you do? So what would you do? Like, let's say you are going to, you are migrating to another country, Australia, let's say, now that you have to prove the fact that you are good in English, what would you do? You will probably follow an English course. Then you go to a place like British Council and do this little exam called IELTS. Then you are getting a band score. If your band score is five, you're okay. Six means you're good. Seven means you're pretty good. So that is the process we should follow. Because without measurements, nothing's working. Like, let's say, okay, I'm poor. The next question I would ask is like, how poor? Like, how poor? Like, you should have a measurement. Then you are saying that, okay, I'm not very good with English. Then, then I'll probably ask, what's your IELTS score? And how bad or how good? So we should, we need a measurement. We need this kind of a performance indicators to, for the growth. Like if you are if you are trying to like grow yourself, or if you are if you have any kind of personal growth objectives without any kind of uh, performance indicators, then you are basically walking blind like a zombie. So always measure everything. Like let's say you want to build muscles. So if you want to build muscles, then uh, t this time you are curling with uh, uh, ten kgs, and next time you are curling with uh, 12.5 kg, see that's growth. Like we should be able to measure it. So English, you should measure, learn and repeat. So you measure your English language score, preferably IELTS. Like let's say it's five. Five means it's okay, but not very good. Then you learn, then you need, you have to go through some programs, courses. Then uh, you test again. Now it's 6.5, it's pretty good, but uh, my suggestion is you should reach a seven band score. Seven band score means like pretty good. Like you can do pretty much all the thing on this planet if you have seven band score. If you are a doctor or a nurse or a lawyer, then you need eight band score, I guess, in some countries. But seven band score means like pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, you can do almost all the things. So to do this thing, the best platform, uh, um, Right. Uh, okay. I got another. Right. Okay. Yes, that's right. Oh yeah. In my YouTube channel, I talk about this. Like I talk about this many times because usually to do this process, you have to spend so much money. I have spent so much money. Uh, when I was trying to migrate to Australia, to do my studies sometimes ago, like 10 years ago. So you had to pay like 40,000, 45,000 for the testing center, get the test. You can check your IELTS band score. Then let's say it's not good enough. Then you have to go to a course and pay more money and learn it and go and test again. So this is a pretty complicated process, but the DPILTS, this website, this platform has automated everything. All the lessons are there for free and all the beginner, intermediate and advanced courses are there. And you can take the test for free. This is not the proper test, by the way. Like let's say you need the IELTS certification. You had to go to a test center like British Council and get it done properly. But this test is simulating the real environment. We have four components. The most difficult uh, component to simulate is the speaking test. So they have used artificial intelligence. So there's an artificial intelligence program listening to you speaking and asking you question and assessing your speaking uh, level. So this is for free. So you can try this anytime you want. So I strongly recommend you to go to dpilts.com website and get the test first. So there's a link called free online test. Click on it and get the test first. Then you know where you are. Like, let's say you are you have 3.5 or maybe 4.5. It's not good enough. Then you go back to lessons and you follow through the lessons. Then you go and test again. But let's say you have seven for writing, seven for reading, good. Then uh, six for listening five for speaking then you have to work on your listening and speaking then you don't really have to look at the writing and reading lessons because you're already good then you have to improve your listening and speaking so then take a look at all of those lessons and you are very close to the seven band score six and five that means like you should probably take a look at the intermediate lessons or advanced lessons 
Then like once you finish all of those lessons, then go ahead and uh, do the test again. Achieve seven. So that's the process. So that's the ideal process. Previously, it was very costly. Now that it's there in this IPA, uh, I, uh, dpielts.com, everything's for free. Uh, that's uh, how to fix English. So I strongly recommend you guys to like invest some serious effort here and time, maybe like few hours every day. If you invest few hours, you guys are already in a university, right? So how did you come to a university? You went through like very difficult examinations in Sri Lanka. You went through O levels and you went through A levels and you got a really good, a really good Z score. And that's why you guys are here. So you guys are already in the like top intelligent people in Sri Lanka, like maybe top 5%, maybe top 10%. So this thing should be really easy for you, really easy for you. So invest some time and invest some effort, repeat the process, measure, learn, and repeat, measure, learn, and repeat, measure first, identify the weak spots, develop them and test again. So repeat this process till you get seven for all the areas like listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Then you're good to go with English. And in the case you have to migrate to another country, then go to a test center and get the proper test. You'll get that marks. Okay. So then uh, you have to understand what kind of demand in the global market for freelancing skills. I'm not really talking about the corporate demand. Corporate demand is different because I told you before, it's really nice as a country, if we can have a national political focus to open up all the barriers and go to global market, but it's not the case here. So no point of complaining now that you are trying to go to global market as an individual. So uh, these are, so these are uh, the uh, avenues that you can like easily walk into the global market as an individual. And I got another comment. It's saying that most of the people say watching films with English subtitle is productive way to improve English. It is true. It is true. But uh, again, like let's say you watch 10, uh, 10 movies and uh, that's uh, 30 hours of movie watching with subtitles. Okay, so how are you going to measure? How are you going to measure your progress? Still, you don't really have any measurement of your progress, right? So all the progress without measurement is not really a progress. I don't really think it's a progress. You don't, maybe, maybe it's a progress. Maybe it's not. You're like walking blind like a zombie. So always measure everything. Like, let's say you want to improve something. You want to improve your running speed. You want to do a four minute mile or that kind of stuff. So that you should have a measurement. So try that. That's also a pretty productive way, but always measure. So this is actually improving your listening abilities. But what about reading? And okay, you are reading subtitles. So you are improving reading ability too. What about writing and speaking? So you have to improve all four components. So always get the test, measure your level and repeat the process. So web designing and development, I actually drag it to the top because you guys are already probably doing it. If you guys are doing web designing and development in the university and coding, uh, tell me in the chat. I'm pretty sure that you guys are doing this, this stuff already. So web designing and development, lots of frameworks are out there and lots of new technologies out there. So back in the days, like I remember when I was a student, we used to use uh, this uh, MVC architecture, model view and control architecture. Now that we have way more advanced stuff, you guys are probably using way more advanced frameworks. And for the databases, we have a lot more technologies than we had like 10 years ago. And the coding, uh, the coding world is also evolving and we have desktop apps and most of the apps we are developing for the mobile applications. So iOS app apps are also there. The Android apps, it's a huge market, but when it comes to the market value, iOS app is a huge market because there are lots of money. And the graphic designing, I told you before, if you go to a shopping mall, uh, a supermarket, you look around, all of those things are designed by graphic designers. Huge market when you're watching television, YouTube channels, movies, all of those things are designed by, created by video editors, VFX artists, 3D modeling and animation. Again, huge market. Architectural visualization is also a pretty good market if you are like into that kind of visual stuff. Like when an architect designs some building, uh, he give that design to a draftman. The draftman is creating a CAD design. The CAD design is a fairly technical document. Uh, like a normal person, like probably you and me who are not into architecture, can't understand it. So then uh, 
they are passing it over to the architectural visualization uh, for the architectural visualization. So then a 3D artist is creating a 3D model of this building and adding lights and all the objects and make it a photorealistic uh, 3D picture, 3D model. And sometimes they create 3D animations too. That's also pretty good market content writing. If you are into writing and if you can't write, if you can write in English, if you can write copies, taglines and that kind of stuff for commercial work, there's also a pretty good market. So those are the skills that you can develop. The next question is like, now that we know the skills, then we have to develop the skills. So uh, if you are into coding, right. Uh, Ashen is saying, yes, Java is a, Java had a huge demand back in the days. It's not the case anymore. Yes, I used to be a Java programmer back in 2005, 7, 10, that time, then it's not the case anymore. I think another most popular programming language is Python. Is it? I'm not really sure. Java used to be the most popular programming language back in the days. So we use Java to develop all the enterprise applications. It was not very popular in a desktop application, but yes, that too, and web applications. Uh, and uh, most importantly, uh, I used to write uh, mobile application for Symbion operating system using Java back in the days, like that's back in 2007, then iPhone happened, so everything was destroyed. So yes, uh, then you have to develop these skills. So you have to uh, learn how to do web designing and development if you are into it. If you are into software development, then you have to learn coding, graphic designing. To do all of those stuff, uh, I'll give you some uh, starting points. If you learn to code, if you want to learn to code, so lots of people who are doing a management track in the IT degree. So some of my friends used to do the management track in the IT degree because they're not really good with coding. So I was in the technical track, not in the management track. So lots of people, they know that IT is a good industry, but they don't really like coding. So they always take the management track. I don't really think that's a good approach. So even if you are doing management track, you should have a solid understanding of coding and how this technical world is working. So I worked as a business analyst uh, for a company. So then you have to understand the business world as well as the technical world. So some solid coding fundamentals is always a must as I believe. So if you are doing management IT stuff, I strongly recommend you to go to DP code. This is a, uh, there you can find 64 project designed for school kids. So it's actually, it's designed for school kids, yes, but uh, it's giving you this uh, solid understanding of how a programmer is thinking to solve a problem. We look at the problem, we try to break it down to small components. Then for each component, we try to figure out step-by-step -step instructions to solve that problem. So that thinking pattern is essential to a programmer. So the DP code, there are 64 projects to do uh, to complete the 64 project it'll take like 64 hours that's the worst case scenario so 64 hours let's say uh you are investing two hours every day then that's gonna be 32 days like about a month if you're investing four hours every day then that's gonna be 16 days like little more than two weeks so and if you are a fast learner and if you are not taking one hour to complete one project, let's say you are taking like 30 minutes to complete a project, then if you are investing two hours, uh, 30 minutes every day, 64 days, one hour every day, 32 days. So see, like these things are not really taking so much time. Like if you're accelerating the process by adding more time and adding more efficiency into it. So then uh, like, let's say you are good with coding. You have some Python understanding too. You know a little bit of Python. And uh, you have already like went through the IELTS thing I told you before, like test, learn and repeat process till you get the seven band score. Now that you are in a very good position, then if that be the case, you can go to open.uom.lk. There you have the full stack web developer course again for free. You can do it and get the certificate and get a good knowledge. And uh, that would be a really nice stepping stone for you to go to the industry. If you don't want to go to industry, you can go to uh, freelancing work straight away. But I strongly recommend you to get some little exp experience, like working experience in a proper working environment before you start freelancing work. But if you are fully confident that you can do freelancing works anyway, go ahead. But the most important thing, uh, 
uh, open.uok.lk is also coming. Uh, I don't really think I'm allowed to tell you any more details about it yet, uh, but brace yourself, people. Open.uok.lk is also coming. And if you if you are thinking that like uh, you want to go to graphic designing, video editing, and 3D modeling, animation, and that kind of uh, little visual and artistic stuff, then uh, I strongly recommend Udemy and Skillshare. In Udemy, you have to purchase course by course. Like sometimes there are like deals. Uh, you can purchase a course for like a few thousand rupees. Totally worth it. In Skillshare, I like Skillshare so much because uh, you can get the subscription to Skillshare. It's going to cost you like 6,000 rupees per year like very reasonable amount of money uh yeah i'm not really sure whether it's six thousand because uh last time i purchased it it was six thousand so i'm not really sure about the conversion rate and the dollar amount if someone please check me uh check whether the uh skillshare is still six thousand drop a chat here so skillshare once you get the subscription then you are getting access to the entire course library so that's freaking amazing so there you can learn about all of, all of those things graphic designing content writing 3d modeling animation 2d uh, designs animations graphic designing anything so most important thing people we are trying to reach the global market so in the global market you are competing with the global talent so you should have a really high level of very polished level of work to compete with the uh, other countries like india china so when you're doing this do it seriously and always try to make things perfect okay don't just try to get away with it we are not here to get away with it right like when you're in the school sometimes like you are in the school because you have to go to school right and some people like they are in the university they because they have to go to university but you are not doing this because you have to do it you are doing this because you really really want to do it right because you want to make money you want to create wealth that's why you're doing this so do it seriously and develop serious skills uh uh right okay i'll come to that point uh then uh, okay the next question uh, is actually about uh okay i have uh, another chat too uh, what are the recommend recommended areas if you want to be a business analyst business analyst should have a really good communication skills and really good presentation skills like you should look good you should uh, dress nice so those things matters and you should you should have a, a serious skills of persuasion you should be able to persuade someone like you have some idea like sometimes the business community is asking us to do things in their software but immediately in a split second you should be able to understand that the current technology can't do it so i remember when i was doing some project so my client was asking uh, like when the employees are walking through the door they should be automatically identified that's back in like 2010 or something so we didn't really have a reliable technology if to do that kind of facial recognition using image like video data and we can't read the retina remotely back in the days even to date we don't really have reliable technology to do it so in a split second you should be able to understand that okay we can't do it right we can't do it so then you're telling the client that okay we can't do it even if we can do it those equipments are super costly so how how about we implement a thumb uh, scanning printer thumb, thumb scanner as always so it gets the job done and it's reliable too so yeah so you should have that kind of persuasion power and you should have a solid understanding of the business world as well as the technology world because you are bridging the communication gap between those two worlds so you should have a solid understanding of both the worlds otherwise it's going to be pretty difficult for you to do your job then uh, the next question so when you go to these platforms you know fiverr you create a gig so i ask you to develop the skill and get a little experience and do something like then you have some portfolio items when you go to fiverr when you're creating the gig you can display your portfolio items so otherwise like what are you going to show like you have a fresh gig and in upwork you're creating your profile and you should be able to show everyone else okay these are the graphics i designed these are the videos i edited so you should have some portfolio items so same thing like when you're going to a job maybe one day maybe after a couple of years after passing out so you have a 
a degree certificate saying that you are a software engineer, IT professional from a prestigious university in Sri Lanka, but then I'm asking you to prove it. Then, okay, you should be able to say that, okay, sure, Malinda. So this is the mobile app I developed. Okay, look at this is the website I developed. You should have some portfolio items. So develop those things. If you do all of those things, that would be the answer to this question. Usually it's very difficult to get the first freelancer order. What solutions do you recommend for this? I think I, this is uh, Chamil. Chamil, I think I already answered your question. You should have some portfolio items and your gig should be super clean. And there are some other tricks that you can use. So if you Google the same thing, or if you search the same thing in YouTube, there are tons of videos explaining how to do this thing, how to get the first order in fiber, how to get the first order in Upwork. So yes, first order is very difficult. So like, let's say you are creating content on YouTube, the first view is difficult. So for subscriber is difficult, then it's getting easier and easier in an order of magnitude. So yeah, start, start. Uh, now that you understand uh, the workflow of doing all of those things, uh, then I'm planning to talk about content creation. But before I talk about content creation, I'll go back to the checklist and summarize everything I was talking about. First, you should have solid English background. To do that, you should measure, learn, and repeat the process. You measure where you are. Then you know your band score. Then you do the lessons. Then you repeat the test. So you repeat this whole loop till you get seven band score for speaking, listening, reading and writing all four areas in English. So that's number one. So while you are doing it, you should develop a skill. If you're already doing software engineering, web development, design, then polish up those skills and create some portfolio items. Then you should have something to show for. If you are doing web designing, you are going to Upwork or Fiverr saying that, okay, hey, I design websites. Then you should have like a couple of websites to show for. So prepare those portfolio items. So you should do both of those things parallelly. You are like uh, learning the skill, getting experience, uh, creating portfolio items while you are learning English. Like if you do both of those things parallelly, you can do these things in accelerated pace. Then you go to global market and get the first job. Do it exceptionally. Like don't just do it uh, to get away with it. I told you before, right? Lots of people go to school because they had to go to school. Some people go to university because they have to go to university. And lots of people go to jobs because they have to go to jobs. Don't do it. So you are going to Fiverr, you are going to Upwork, and you are going to, uh, you, are, you are completing the first order with so much enthusiasm and excitement uh, to capture the world, to capture a certain proportion, to, to, cap uh, to capture a certain portion in the global market. You are doing this not, not because you have to do it. You are doing this because you really, really want to do it. So have that attitude. Uh, so, uh, mm, right. Oh, right. Now that I have interesting questions. So I like this kind of question. This is coming from Pasindu. Pasindu is asking, is it worth to become a Udemy creator as an undergraduate? Yes. So then you are becoming a content, actually like, you know what, Pasindu, like till you asked this question, it didn't occur to me that like even in these slides, I'm talking about content creation. It didn't occur to me that we can do this too, right? Like that's actually a great idea. You can create a course and sell that in Ude Udemy. Not a bad idea. Give it a try. But I'll talk about that later. Content creation is not this straightforward. You have to sort a few more things. What is the best program language to begin, begin with? Uh, this is asked by Ashain. Ashain. Uh, if you're a total beginner to programming, then uh, I'm asking you to try with block coding. Don't pay attention to the programming languages like their syntaxes and stuff. You can sort out those things later once you get your thinking pattern right. So uh, start with block coding. If you want to start with block coding, the DP code platform is then free. So try that. All the lessons are free. Uh, now that I'm going to go to talk about content creation. So content creation is also a way to create wealth by connecting with global market, by being a part of global supply chain. So in the checklist, so you have to understand what are the content in demand. 
then you have to identify the content type that you can actually create, then you monetize it. So that's the process. It's pretty simple. But you know what? So to be successful in content creation market, you should have a certain X factor. How do we call the X factor? Like, how do we define the X factor? You, you have something like something like luck. So that's what, that's what we call the X factor. We don't know what that is. Like, let's say there are two identical people doing the identical things, but this person is generating so much wealth, but this person is not making anything, just peanuts. And when we go to this person's YouTube channel, lots of views. But when we go to this person's YouTube channel, you hear crickets. So what's the difference between this person and this person? We can't truly really understand sometimes. We call that the X factor. Sometimes maybe this person is lucky. We don't know. So that's why we use that kind of word. So if you are doing this kind of stuff, uh, be prepared for that too. Maybe you are creating something really valuable. You check the demand, you identify the content type, and you did everything right, but still nothing's going on correctly. That's possible in content creation business. So be prepared for that uncertainty if you are jumping into this. So if you take a look at the content in demand in the global scale, uh, hold on a second. Uh, if you take a look at the uh, uh, demand, uh, uh, if you take a look at the, uh, the demand, so these are the stuff. You have tutorials, then you have DIY videos, whiteboard videos. You probably have seen it like sometimes like a hand is coming and drawing stuff in whiteboard. It's graphics. Sometimes an actual person is drawing stuff on whiteboard and explaining stuff. Those things are super popular. Then review and experience videos, all the travel videos, food reviews, Hotel reviews, gadget reviews, those things go under review and experience videos. So they are getting some experience and recording it and sharing with the entire world. Then the educational videos and the game streaming is also kind of going under experience section. So they are experienced in the game, then they are sharing their experience with the entire world. So those are the content in demand. Usually there could be other categories, but I sum up a few things here. Then the content types articles that means like you are creating a website and write a written articles then you can create videos then image stack is also a format of articles like if you go to websites like board panda so the article is not really a written article it's a series of interesting and relevant images so that's also a very popular and a very interesting type of content then you can do streams uh live streams game streaming so Sri Lankan people watch cricket like crazy. Eh? So then uh, European people, US people watch football like crazy. So uh, there are lots of people, millions and millions of people watch uh, computer games like crazy. So it's a huge market there. Then you can create music and uh, you can create music and distribute to the whole world. I don't really know anyone who's in Sri Lanka doing this, but the opportunity is there. Like if you are creating that level of content in music world too, then the content distribution. So there are several ways to distribute this content. You can do search engine optimization. Search engine opti When we are talking about search engine optimization, lots of people are thinking that the title tags, meta tags, image, all tags. And these days, most of those things are like next to bullshit. So what you really should do is you had to understand the intent of person who's typing this search query like let's say there is a person who's typing how to root android phone in google so you have to jump into that person's shoes and understand what this person is looking for then you should actually go ahead and do it you should go to google and type how to root an android phone then you are getting lots of content right if you want to appear in the first page what you really should do is create better content than all of those content then Google will identify you and place you at the number one. I'm not going to say this is easy, right? This is super hard because uh, there are lots of people, millions of people who are creating content and you had beat all of those things. We call this uh, thing the skyscraper content. Like there are lots of building and you, your building should be taller. So that's how even the search engine optimization world, there's no other way. So then we can do social media. In social media, we're actually trying to understand the mentality of a person who's sharing something. Like you go to Facebook and in your Facebook feed, you are seeing suggested content. And 
when you see some suggested content, you feel like sharing it. Why are you feeling like sharing it? Because you're thinking that it's an interesting piece of content and other people also will like it. Then you go ahead and share it. So you have to create that kind of content and inspire people to share it. Then you are getting this viral popularity in Facebook. Then you have this thing called platform optimization too. If you are doing a YouTube channel, uh, sometimes the huge proportion of your traffic is coming from YouTube platform itself. If you are doing TikTok, pretty much all the traffic coming from the TikTok platform itself. So you have to understand like how this platform's algorithm is working. Then your videos, your content will be suggested to lots of people. Then you are getting huge exposure, right? So uh, uh, today I'm going to give you like all the topics so you can do in-depth research in the case you want it and come on you guys are in the university you know how to do a research right so then uh, you can monetize all of those things so you can display advertisements then you can do affiliate marketing that's the biggest income then you can uh, use some kind of subscription system that means uh, some people come to your website and to like 99% of your articles are free, but you have paid articles too. You have seen that kind of stuff in Bloomberg, New York Times. Some articles are free, some articles you have to pay for. So that's subscription. Then you can do fan funding. Like in my YouTube channel, I'm doing a fan funding project. You can use platforms like Buy Me a Coffee or Patreon to do that kind of fan funding and give exclusive benefit for them. Then you can do merchandising. You build, you create something, you manufacture something, or you have a service, uh, then you sell it. Then you can do e-commerce. Like if you have like lots of traffic to a website, lots of traffic to a YouTube channel, you can do drop shipping, direct shipping, and you can create a course in Udemy and ask your audience to buy it. So, and you can do consultation. Like when you get lots of traffic to a website or a YouTube channel or a social media profile, you can do lots of things for the monetization. So try all of those things. But before all of those things, uh, you had to create a huge audience. To create a huge audience, there is a certain X factor, but give it a try. Maybe you got it. So then the last piece of advice I want to give you guys is uh, don't think too much because uh, when I'm talking to lots of people who want to make money online, who want to create content, who want to start YouTube channel, they're saying that, hey, Malinda, I'm going to create a YouTube channel. Then uh, some people saying that, hey, Malinda, I'm going to create, I'm going to start a blog and I'm going to start a restaurant. I'm going to start a taxi service. So lots of people are going to do things. Don't do it. Don't going to do things. Do things. So start it. So take the first step. Just imagine there is a ship slowly sailing in the water. It's a ship, but going very slow, like slower than we walk in the water so if we want to do a course correction we can do it right like let's say we are going to north you don't want to go to north you want to go to east you can slowly turn the ship to east right then the ship is going to east so you can do any kind of course correction if you are maybe slowly moving but just imagine you are ship anchored in the harbor can we do a course correction can we do a course correction can we go to north? Can we go to east? If you are going to east, can we go to north? You're not really going anywhere if you are anchored. So start moving people. Take the first step. Take baby step. Take few steps and collect data, collect feedback and do a little course correction and go faster, go a little more faster. So that's how we do things. Start moving. If you are moving, then I maybe I or maybe your uh, professors, your lecturers can do a course correction. But if you're not moving, if you are a ship anchored in the harbor, we can't do a course correction. So don't go into do things, do things. Start now. And the last thing I want to mention you. So when you're living in Sri Lanka, if you are reaching $1,000 income bracket, income mark, let's say, then uh, most of the problem you're facing today would evaporate sublimate actually more than evaporate right most of the problem will be sublimated if you have thousand bucks it's not really huge amount in the global scale if you have just thousand bucks in new york you'll die 
you don't really have place to live, you don't have food to eat, you'll die in New York. To New York to maintain a normal life, you need at least, at least like maybe 4,000 bucks. But in Sri Lanka, if you have 1,000 bucks, most of the money problem you're facing every day, like how to pay tuk-tuk, how to get the bus ticket, how to buy my lunch, how to get the groceries, how to buy new clothes, all of those problems, like day-to-day -day money problems will evaporate or sublimate. So uh, try to reach this one. Like if you start today, if you are parallelly learning English, test, learn, repeat, test, learn, repeat. If you're doing that, in maybe a month, you will be able to get the seven band score and you're developing a skill. You speak, okay, let's say you are thinking that I want to be a web designer and developer. Then uh, you continue with that. Then in three months, maybe you will be able to complete all the course, gather all the knowledge and create few portfolio items. And if you invest next three months of your life for this thing, in the next three months, you'll be able to make, uh, you. some of you will be able to make this amount. Then most of the day-to-day -day money problems will evaporate. Then you are getting so much headspace, like you are getting, it feels like sin in Sri Lanka, by the way, in other countries, thousand is not enough. If you go to USA, thousand is a joke, not enough. But that is the advantage we have here in Sri Lanka. If you are in New York, to get this comfort, you have to make at least $10,000. But in Sri Lanka, if you have 1000 bucks, you are getting uh, so much headspace. Then you can think about the next level of your life. Like, what are the other things I'm going to do? You can take little risks, maybe. Then you have little ex disposable income. You can invest that for another business, maybe. You can do lots, lots of things. So people, give your best shot to make at least 1000 bucks in next 6 to 12 months. So by the time you're coming out of your university, you probably won't be able to hunt for a job, right? You will have the financial freedom that you're looking for. So you have to start somewhere. You are starting from zero dollars, but invest the next six to 12 months to make at least thousand dollars a month. It's a small amount in the global scale, but it's a very reasonable and a comfortable amount in Sri Lanka. So when you have that much money, most of your day-to-day -day money problems will sublimate. So go there, people. If you need any more help, contact me uh, via Instagram. Drop me a DM. Uh, that's it, people. So I try to keep it uh, short uh, because I don't want to talk too much about this stuff. I want you to start. So people, start the thing. Learn English. Learn a skill. Go to global market. Maybe create content. Maybe work as a freelancer. Uh, and. Uh, when I'm talking to you guys, maybe after six months, uh, you should be able to tell me, some of you guys should be able to tell me, uh, hey, Malinda, I started my process six months ago. Today, I'm making thousand bucks a month. So have that commitment to yourself. And some people asking about the investing in stock market. So shall we make thousand bucks first? If you have thousand bucks, maybe you can invest maybe two, three hundred dollars every month in stock market, cryptocurrencies and currency market and that's, that kind of stuff. Before we invest, we should have a cash flow, right? If you don't have a cash flow, what are you going to invest? So we'll make money first. Maybe after six months, uh, Sean will invite me to talk about investments, global scale investments. So on that day, uh, I want you guys to make at least thousand uh, bucks. Then uh, we'll try to invest few hundred dollars every month on a global scale investment but we should make money first then we can invest all right people that's all i have to say today uh i'll hand over the microphone to the organizing committee thank you um thank, thank, you, Malinda. Very much. Uh, Sean, thank you so much for joining uh today malinda sean thank you for inviting me my pleasure. No, 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 and it's a, it's a great pleasure to have you here. I think uh, students are very excited to hear that uh, you're joining. So, sorry, my wife, my voice is not clear. That's so good today. Um, oh. It was a really, and, um, um, I mean, they're very excited. And people from today, um, people from Jaffna University is joining. Morotua is joining. And uh, we, there's some people are from Ruhuna. Basically, all over the country are joining. Uh, very nice. from yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, a special day for um, Info Studio as well. Uh, the Info Studio is a platform which is um, 
which has been developed by students of uh, Department of Industrial Management, Malinda. So they have a YouTube channel, they have Facebook page. So I think from the content that you delivered today, they also might be able to focus on monetizing their I think. Uh, yes, yes. That's <laughs> and, but, yeah, so, but, but I'm, I am really would like to understand because when I had a chat with you personally, you're very, very, um, something which uh, which was catchy from the conversation I had with you was thousand rupee, south thousand dollar figure. Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> so why why do you say thousand and <clears throat> um, is it critical? How, how critical is, is is this process of uh, uh, why is it so critical to earn thousand uh, dollars in the first place? Yes, yes. Uh, Sean, uh, let's uh, like everyone can get your calculators out and do a little number crunching. If you convert a uh, thousand dollars to rupees that's gonna be like 360 thousand rupees per month right yeah, yeah. The exchange rate actually. so Sean like yeah. just imagine all of these students are, are making uh, 360 thousand rupees every month uh Sean uh, I don't really think like many of those guys will be here don't you think yeah yeah <laughs> Of course. So that is that that is the barrier we have to pass. And in the global scale, thousand bucks is a really small amount. Like yeah. in most of the developed country, if you have thousand bucks, it will be evaporated in a matter of like five six days. In most of the developed country, so in Sri Lanka, in our economy, it's a very comfortable income for most of the people to true, spend true. through the month. So that thousand is a critical point. So you should go there then. Most of this day-to-day -day money worries like, oh, right, look at this uh, loaf of bread. It's 300 bucks. So, all right, 300 bucks is what, like 80 cents? So you pay it, right? Yeah. But it's a big problem for us because it's uh, 300 rupees. So uh, if it's 80 cents, you'll pay it anyways. Like in New York, I don't really think you can buy a loaf of bread for 80 cents. You have to pay like 350 sometimes mm -hmm. to yeah. buy a loaf of bread. So. When you think in dollars, lots of things are super cheap in Sri Lanka, even to date. So when you're making at least thousand bucks, so most of the day to day money worries, money problems we are facing. OK, took took how much is it when you go to grocery and you buy your staples, then how much is this rice and uh, lentils and these vegetables, chicken? How much is it? You probably like wouldn't have to ask any of those questions if you are making that much money at least that much money then you are getting so much headspace you are getting so much freedom to think about big ideas so uh, we had to break that barrier thousand bucks and uh, if you work super hard you can break that barrier in six months six months guaranteed yeah yep let's say let's let's be like uh, let's think about the worst case scenario six to twelve months definitely you can break it uh, if you maybe like if, if you're working as a freelancer and if you're fully committed to it, if you are maybe creating content in the global scale, six to 12 months, you can break it. And by the way, if you make thousand bucks, don't think that like everything is sorted in the global level. We are still dirt poor, right? If you're making thousand dollars a month means in the global scale, we are still dirt poor. True. You had to make like 10,000 a month to call yourself okay. But thousand is pretty good in Sri Lanka. We'll break that barrier first. We'll focus on that one first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Malinda. Now, now the, the, there's the, the other thing that um, that um, when we, because since I I had this privilege of uh, interacting with people like you, um, uh, what you what you guys are doing is it's just monetizing the set of talents you are you are having, and um, all of these university students. For example, Malinda, at the end of their fourth year, not at the end of the fourth year, at the end of their first year, um, um, they gather so much of skills. They have very good skills. Um, but the problem I see as a university lecturer is that they don't understand the recipe uh, of how to monetize that skill. And right. online, online entrepreneurship is only one stream. Um, and uh, what, is your, what is your opinion on that? And what is your recommendation? Uh, uh, yes, on sure. how to yeah. Yes, I, under, I understand the problem because our environment is actually not designed for them to monetize their skill. So uh, that's exactly why I said that like it's really good if we can have some kind of national 
political focus to open up Sri Lanka to the world. But we don't really have such a thing. So I think the best thing that they can do is work as a freelancer, in the, as an individual. It's really nice if we can have a corporate focus, national level political focus to do this thing like China and India. But uh, we are not there yet. We will be there. Like, okay, let's say we can have like top down approach and the bottom up approach too, right? So top down approach would be nice, but uh, it's not apparently it's not happening. So we'll use the bottom up approach. We'll develop individuals who are connected with the global scale. Then maybe after a few years, there will be lots of people who are connected with the global economy as individuals that the top will automatically change to those people. Don't you think? Yeah, well, they are true. Thank you so much. Right. There are some other questions too. Right. I think I already answered the questions too. Uh, and uh, Sean, uh, yeah, I have run to another thing too. Okay. Thank you so <laughs> yeah. much, Malinda. On behalf of the department and the academic staff and the university, would My really pleasure. like to thank you. Uh, or do you, uh, or do you organize the committee? Right. Okay. Um, with that, we have reached the end of the today's session. Before we conclude, on behalf of all the members of the Department of Industrial Management, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to Mr. Maling the Alhakon. Thank you for dedicating your valuable time and effort. It was indeed our pleasure to have had you join us. I believe that everyone in our audience took the maximum essence through that and will use your guidance in the future as well. And also, we are grateful to the senior lecturer, Shan Jai Singh, for his presence today. Finally, I would like to thank for everyone who came here to support us. So, we conclude our third session of Info Studio with a documentary video clip at Department. See you in another wonderful session. As Malin Nessa said, don't anchor your ship at the harbor. Move on. Thank you and have a good night. Technology has forever changed everything. From the way we work to the way we think. Humanity is witnessing an unfathomable revolution that has altered man's very existence. Information technology, commonly referred to as IT, is integrated into every industry, be it healthcare, manufacturing, hospitality, and more, making IT professionals sorted in almost every field. Have you ever thought about expanding your horizon and being equipped with both IT and managerial skills? Situated in the sacred city of Kalania, the University of Kalania is one of the leading universities in Sri Lanka that has nurtured many great personalities. The Faculty of Science is home to many aspiring undergraduates who are about to spread their wings and explore the world. The Department of Industrial Management, one of the very first departments in the science faculty, was established with the aim of molding science students into professionals who are well versed in both management and IT streams. The Department of Industrial Management uh, was formed in 1968 and we have a proud history of over 50 years. From very, very humble beginnings, the department has grown um, from uh, 15 students over the years to offering 
industrial management as one of the three subjects in the Bachelor of Science. 2002-2003, we pioneered and launched the famous recruited Bachelor of Science in Management and Information Technology degree program. The program is around 20 years old and from its very inception it has produced outstanding graduates who are well sought after, desired by the private sector and have done very well for themselves and for their families and for the nation over the years. The department is one of the very few departments who have ISO 9001-2015 certification and we are indeed very proud uh, that not only for the uh, undergraduate programs, our postgraduate programs also have a similar reputation. The placement of our students, the placement rates and the uh, average starting salary of our students are among the highest in the country and we believe that an all-round education, not only in the technical areas, but in all, in, uh, we place a huge emphasis on the, the overall development of our students. The Department of Industrial Management offers two degree programs. The students who sat for their advanced levels in the science stream can apply for Bachelor of Science in Management and Information Technology. Interested students are then shortlisted through an aptitude test. Applicants who meet the requirements set by the University Grants Commission are then selected for the degree program. During the first year, the undergraduates follow a common set of modules that provides the fundamental concepts in both management and IT related subjects. In the second academic year, students are given the opportunity to select either Bachelor of Science in MIT or Bachelor of Science in IT based on their competencies and performance. Undergraduates are also offered an internship during their third year to provide them first-hand experience before they formally enter the industry. The students can either opt to get a general degree after completing three years or complete four years to get an honours degree. Bachelor of uh, Science Honours in MIT and IT degree offers wide range of opportunities for the students in uh, management and information technology discipline. Further, it provides students uh, the flexibility to select the suitable degree based on their competencies after getting the background knowledge. That will be done at the end of the first year based on the student preference and their performance. BSc Honours in MIT students, they will further strengthen their knowledge in management and information technology in the second year. At the end of the second year, they are getting the opportunity to specialize in main, three main areas, business system engineering, operations and supply chain management, and information systems. From 2021, the Department of Industrial Management started a new degree program, which is called the Bachelor of Science in Information Technology. It's also a degree program which is uh, uh, mainly aiming at the software industry in Sri Lanka as well as the IT related opportunities in business organizations for various positions. Basically the degree program focuses on software engineering and also data science together with some other uh, roles like uh, DevOps engineers, support engineering, uh, IoT specialists, network specialists and so on and so forth. Amidst the excellent academic facilities, the department is also designed to provide undergraduates with infrastructure at the level best.
equipped with a library, a multimedia room and practical labs that utilize up-to-date technologies. The department provides a wide range of facilities for undergraduates pursuing degrees. Apart from the high quality academic facilities, the department also provides a platform for young undergraduates to enhance their soft skills. The Industrial Management Science Students Association, also known as IMSSA, is the official student body of the department and is one of the most active and prominent student bodies among local universities. It holds the pride in organizing many extravagant events, including renowned hackathons, talent shows, and an industry acclaimed magazine. The Exposition Magazine, one of the leading university business magazines in the country, is published annually by the undergraduates themselves. The magazine contains articles written by undergraduates and industry experts that provide information on the latest trends and innovations in the industry to those who seek knowledge. The IMSSA also takes pride in organizing Hackets, an inter-university startup challenge. It is a platform that enables young innovators to pitch and explore their ideas, preparing them to be the leaders of tomorrow. Undergraduates get an opportunity to create essential networks with industry executives while enhancing their knowledge and skills. HackX Junior is an inter-school hackathon organized to provide a suitable platform for the bright young minds of school children to transform their ideas into reality. Rasoga an intra-departmental talent show showcases the aesthetic talents of aspiring undergraduates. To enhance the team working skills and sportsmanship of the MITNs and bring forth their young spirit, a cricket match is held annually. Inculcating the essence of giving, the students are also encouraged to host a dance cellar once a year. The graduates with both management and IT expertise, equipped with soft skills, step into the industry as multi-talented, versatile and well-sorted professionals.